Hello class. Today we are talking about the excretory system. Now the main component of your excretory system uh, is going to be your kidneys and the associated organs, right? Your kidneys, your ureters, bladder, the different blood vessels that supply your kidney. We're going to look at all of those things in excruciating detail. However, today we are going to focus on some of those other organ systems we've talked about already that also have an excretory function. So what are some of those um, organ systems? Well, first let's take a look at just generally, when we think of excretion, what are we trying to accomplish? Well, our body generates a lot of waste. Um, now, luckily, we're pretty good at repurposing a lot of the different metabolic byproducts that we make, but some things we just need to get rid of. You know, some wastes are very poisonous uh, if they accumulate in your body. For example, when you break down proteins, that amino group, well, you're going to get a buildup of urea, uric acid in your body if you don't deal with that. Uh, so if you have kidney failure, it could build up in your body to toxic levels. Or how about if you have a repressed respiratory rate? We talked about this quite a bit in the respiratory system. What's going to happen if you are not properly exchanging gases? You'll get a buildup of carbon dioxide, right, leading to acidosis. So we need to get rid of these metabolic waste products that can build up in our bodies, and this process is called excretion. Now, keep in mind, not only do we need to balance those things I've already talked about, but salt balance is very important as well. Keeping our bodies at that nice isotonic level. Uh, our kidneys are going to be the main actors in that. So we're gonna, not going to talk too much about this today, but keep in mind that is an essential role of our, uh, of our kidneys. Right? We need to maintain fluid balance within the body. It's why? What happens when you drink a lot of water? Right? If you drink gallons and gallons of water, what's going to happen to your urine? It's going to be pretty clear. You're not going to be getting rid of a lot of um, salt, it's going to be fairly dilute urine because you're trying to maintain that balance. We, in the enzyme function lab, we looked at what can happen if certain metabolic byproducts can build up too much. Right? What happened to our enzyme catalase when we put it in acids and we put it in bases? It either didn't function at all or functioned barely. Right? So, Keeping that pH normalized is essential for most of our bodily functions. So again, a lot of these waste products like, um, like carbon dioxide, for example, can affect the pH of your blood. All right, so we have many homeostatic mechanisms we are going to explore that keep these things in balance. Now, I've already talked about this, but salt water balance, uh, very important. Getting rid of excess carbon dioxide, excess salts, urea, uh, and any excess water, super important. Uh, our bodies are quite good at recycling most of what we use. We, tr we try to be as efficient as possible with the resources we are given, because we're not sure if those resources are going to run out. So it was an evolutionary advantage to be pretty dang efficient. Now, some things, however, after they are processed, we can't recycle them. We need to get rid of them. Now, we do discharge waste, but it's actually quite a small amount of waste. And what organs actually are involved in the discharging of this small amount of waste? Well, it's going to be the lungs, the skin, the liver, um, and transport systems. And most importantly, the kidneys. So we're going to explore today the lungs, the skin, and the liver. So the skin. The skin is your largest organ of the human body. It covers an area of 1.5 to 2 square meters. And its about thickness varies from uh, about you know, half a millimeter on your eyelids to about 6 millimeters on the soles of your feet. 
Now, there are two general layers of skin, the epidermis and the dermis. Um, epi out means outside, right? That's your outer layer of skin. And that's going to be mainly your dead skin cells. And then your dermis has a lot of that vasculature, your sebaceous glands, all the fancy stuff. So, epidermis, outer layer. Uh, this is made up of flat, keratinized cells that are dead. Uh, and this layer is very important because it is effectively um, waterproof slash resistant to anything getting in your body. Remember, it's one of those first lines of defense. Not many things can get through your skin. Your dermis is the layer under the epidermis, and this is the layer that is alive. Uh, it contains all of your blood vessels, nerve endings, sweat, oil glands, hair follicles, and fat cells. Um, and the sweat glands here are what has that excretory function. Now, what I'm about to tell you is kind of gross, um, but don't stress too much about it. Your sweat is effectively dilute urine. Yep, it is effectively dilute urine. Um, it does have an excretory function in your skin, right? When you're sweating, not only is it to get uh, your body temperature down, but also, what are you going to be releasing? Well, obviously water, but urea and inorganic salts which is the main component usually of your urine. So, uh, effectively your sweat is dilute urine. Now, keep in mind, um, it does have that homeostatic function reducing your core temperature. And if you took chemistry already, uh, you'll understand how that works, right? The heat from your body goes into breaking the interactions that hold water together as a liquid and then it evaporates and becomes a gas. So literally it's taking the heat energy of your body to change phases from a liquid to a gas. What about your lungs? We studied this one in a lot of detail. You should know this already. Uh, but your lungs have a very essential role to play. We are bringing in that oxygen gas for cellular respiration. And what is that nasty waste product of cellular respiration that we need to get rid of? Well, it's carbon dioxide, right? We need to get rid of that carbon dioxide, and that is the excretory function of your lungs. Now, keep in mind that your lungs, um, we also get rid of a little bit of water vapor here. Most of the time, we don't want to get rid of water vapor. This is just a side effect of needing a moist alveolar membrane in order for gas exchange to occur. Remember, you need that liquid in order for those gases to dissolve and thus pass through the alveoli and into the capillaries that surround it. So we do lose some water vapor, um, and this is most clear in the winter, right, when you're breathing out that hot water vapor that instantly condenses in the winter air and you get your, you can, you can see your breath. Uh, you can also see it if you're a glasses wearer, if you want to clean your glasses, you can and make a nice film of water condensation on your lenses. So the lungs, a very important excretory function. Last up is the liver of our introductory organs. Now the liver uh, is a very important organ in the digestive system. We talked about many of its functions, right? It stores a bunch of vitamins, it's a detoxifier. Um, it's heavily involved in the metabolism of all of your macromolecules. It modifies a lot of your macromolecules. Remember that it does have a very important role to play in the glucose concentration in your blood, right? It stores a ton of glycogen that we can break down at a moment's notice in order to resupply our blood with sugar. Um, and it's also involved in, uh, you know, turning that sugar into good old fatty acids uh, if we are full up on our glycogen stores. So it has a lot of important functions in the body, but what is its excretory function? It's something we all also already learned about. In the digestive system, 
we talked about uh, jaundice, right? What caused jaundice? Their liver was failing, and as a result, they weren't properly filtering out bilirubin, that byproduct of red blood cell breakdown. Now your liver does excrete bilirubin into the bile. Something I didn't mention at that time is your liver will excrete quite a few things into the bile to get rid of it from your body. A lot of other things it will detoxify um, and put back into your blood, usually to be picked up by the kidneys and excreted that way. So your liver has a very important excretory function it's the main detoxifier of the body, dealing with all sorts of poisonous substances. Right? Whenever you ingest a medication, your liver is going to detoxify and excrete that. Uh, let's say you, know, you ate some fish that had some poison in it. Your, body's, your liver is going to be the thing that deals with that as well. You ingest some toxic chemicals. Your liver, unfortunately, has to deal with that as well. So. Your liver is very important uh, when it comes to excretion, as well as many of the other functions of your body. But the kidneys. So I know I said I wouldn't really talk much about them today, uh, but let's briefly talk about what it is they filter out. So the kidneys um, are the main organ of your excretory system. They are exceptionally important in maintaining uh, homeostatic balance within the body. Uh, they remove urea and other waste from the blood. They regulate the amount of water in the circulatory system, and they adjust the amount of certain substances in the blood. Now, the kidneys are amazing at filtering. Um, they filter things at an incredible rate. The entire blood supply of the, of the entire human body passes through the kidneys once every 30 minutes. So you can think of them as blood scrubbers, right? They, they effectively remove a lot of those uh, poisonous substances or waste products from the blood and you will excrete them from your body as a result. Now how is it excreted? Well, it's excreted in a form that we call urine. Right? Once that waste product um, is filtered from the blood and the kidney does some modification to it, which we're going to learn all about, once it leaves the kidneys it is now urine. And what does urine mainly consist of? Well that is going to be mainly water, urea, and inorganic salts. Um, other substances, certain nutrients can be found in the urine. Uh, it can be a sign of illness or maybe you just ingested far too much of that nutrient and your body's getting rid of it, like sugar for example. Now this here is going to be the focus of the remainder effectively of the unit. And this is the nephron, this is the functional unit of the kidney. This is actually how it filters things from your blood um, and how it reabsorbs a lot of the stuff that it filters out. Because the filtering process is pretty indiscriminate. So we do need to reabsorb a lot of the stuff that finds its way into our nephrons. And that's why we have this exceptionally complex structure. So, quick rundown here of all of the different byproducts, uh, metabolic byproducts that we need to get rid of and what doesn't. Well, ammonia, um, breakdown of amino acids in the liver, well, we get rid of that in the kidneys. Urea, this is what usually happens to the ammonia, it gets converted to urea. And then our kidneys and our skin get rid of it, remember, sweat is pretty much dilute urine. Uh, carbon dioxide. That's going to be excreted by the lungs. Water gets excreted by your kidneys, gets excreted by your intestines, your skin, and your lungs. And mineral salts are being secreted by your kidneys and your skin. Uh, you might be thinking to yourself, your skin? Well, what happens when your sweat dries on your skin? You can almost peel that grainy texture off. That is salts. Now you may be saying to yourself, Mr. Salt, you forgot about poo. Uh, I did not forget about fecal matter. It is actually not considered an excretory product, even though we call it excrement, which, I, you know, clearly it's not the best choice of words. Uh, the reason we do not consider this an excretory product is because 
it is not actually a byproduct of cellular metabolism. It's effectively just the leftover stuff from digestion. It's your undigestible fiber. It's all that bacteria in your gut. Um, so we do not consider fecal matter a excretory product. So we will not be talking about poo um, at all really in this unit to your dismay, I am sure. Right on class, have a wonderful day.